Hi, my name is Simon Meacher from Engaging Data, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can seamlessly link Wearscape 3D to a Git repository. Now, as you may already be aware, Wearscape 3D is an advanced modeling tool with an extremely simple user interface. It can help you to discover and profile data from multiple source systems and then merge all of the data and model the data into your desired outcome. So you can use things like Data Vault, Third Normal Form, or Kimball, just to name a few modeling techniques. Wearscape 3D is a data driven designer, which means it will go through the structure of your data, look and profile the data, build out relationships relationships and help you to construct a full picture of your source system before you then move that into your data model. Wearscape 3D is completely automated, meaning that all of the steps that you go through to profile data or to build your model is all built and configured within the tool. It's available day one, but then it gives you the opportunity to configure and change to better suit your company. Now this functionality is great and enables teams to rapidly move through and discover data and data systems before then modeling it into a final data model. Once the data model has been designed, it can then be taken from Wearscape 3D and moved over to Wearscape Red, where it can be turned into a physical data model within your data warehouse. Wearscape 3D is designed to export and import models using XML. It's been possible to export data models from Wearscape 3D and save them in a separate location and then ingest them at a later date. It is also possible not just to use the internal XML file, which is the metadata within Wearscape, to take the SQL and generate the DDL and DML files at an object level and save that file separately. And this functionality has been around for Wearscape for some time now, but the more exciting thing is it's now possible to integrate these fully with GitHub or any other Git repository. Since version 8.6.5, where Wearscape enabled a new functionality so that end users could configure their own workflows, it has been possible to trigger the command lines to export and import files using workflow buttons. And since then, we've continued to develop this to enable those files to be pushed and pulled to any Git repository that you may want. So configuring the workflows to export the file and commit means that your development team can make changes within one repository, one Wearscape Red repository, and then commit those changes to a Git repository on a periodical basis. You can adapt that based on the way you work. So some people like to do it at the end of the day, other people like to do it at the end of a JIRA ticket or any kind of service ticket that you may have, or it may even be done periodically just to show that there's changes going on throughout the day. So you may even do it once every hour. Once you've integrated Wearscape 3D with a Git repository to enable the data modelers to build out your data models and push changes and commit changes to your Git repository, it's then possible for you to automate off the top of that and use data pipelines either to move the data model through to separate repositories and deploy the changes through to your physical environment. So the, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're using GitHub Desktop just to demonstrate what's going on within Git as things start to change. We've already connected the desktop to the repository. So we have this repository called Wearscape 3D CICD. And in here, we only have one branch at the moment. So in order to take a production model, and we're gonna assume that this prod model is our version of the production code, what we'd want to do is create a branch, a development branch of that production code in order to make changes. So I'm gonna do that by creating a branch. So I select on the master model version of our production model and click on create branch. Okay, so that is now completed. So we'll just refresh the repository and you can now see that we have a development version of our production master model version. So if we go in here, this is going to look identical to our, our previous version. And if we go back to GitHub desktop, we can see that we now have a new branch in our repository and you can see we, the naming convention we've opted for is the name of the model and then the version of the model. So we've, yeah, it becomes the branch. So prod model development master. And if we go into change history, we can see the file has been created and we can see where it's gone within the repository. 
So that's given us now the opportunity to make changes. And depending on how complex you want to do, you can create different branches of the model within the development branch. So if you wanted to create a feature, you could select the master version of the development branch and click on create branch and it will create a feature branch for you. Okay, so that's now happened. If I refresh, we can now see we have the Simon Nietzsche feature which is the feature branch within the development uh, or the feature model within the development branch of, of our repository. And again, in here, I can start to do things like change things around. If I only wanted to work on uh, a particular object or particular part of the model, I could reduce the feature branch just to include what I'm looking for. And now I can start to make changes. So let's look at see what happens in Git. So if I'm back into my Git repository, you can now see that we have the Simon Meacher feature branch within Git and you can see what's happening. So that is the model before I started to change it, but I've already started to change the model in the feature branch. So I've reduced it just to the product order object. And if I go into that, I may want to choose I'm just going to change an attribute. Now I want to commit that model back to the branch. So I'm going to use the commit to git. And there we go, it's now executed. So if I go back to git, I can now see that an additional item's gone in and we can see that it's gone into the feature branch, which is great. It's changed our model version and in there you can see all of the differences and the deltas of what's changed and when. So when you're dealing with a slightly bigger model, you'll probably want to use the git change functionality to understand what's changed where. So now we've finished our changes and we want to merge this change back into our master development model. We would want to use the merge model to master. And the theory behind this is it's gonna take all of the changes in this model and it's gonna move it into our master model and update the objects that are connected. And then the master development model or development branch is ready to merge to production once we've gone through our testing. So what I then do is I would then click on the merge model to master button. Now the merge has completed. We've refreshed the repository and the feature branch has disappeared. And if we look at the design, the change of the design has been integrated. So the master model in the development branch now contains the changes that we had in the feature branch. So that's all merged in. If we go to the Git repository, we're back in the main branch. The feature branch has disappeared. And if we look at the history of changes, we go to the development branch, changes have just been made to update what we changed in the feature branch, which was to add the additional attribute. And we would do the same to merge all of these back up into our production model uh, once we're happy with all of the changes. And so now we've been able to demonstrate that you could break down the changes or the model into certain features. You can manage those features within Git and then you can merge the changes back into a development branch. And once you're happy with your development changes, you can merge all of that back up into your production master model. And then you can use that master model to deploy the changes straight out to your Wearscape physical repository or target. Ultimately, there are other things you can do. Uh, you may create branches that you then subsequently decide you don't need anymore. So we've developed additional functions and steps to delete models and close branches down. But these configuration steps are very simple and easy to implement and to adjust just like model conversion rules or anything else within Wearscape 3D there is a good starting point for you then to adjust and adapt things into the way that you want them to work in your organization. Now within the repository itself we're using some of the documentation fields such as uh, the user documentation to hold the vital information about where certain things are, how certain naming conventions work and for us this is a really suitable place for these features or this, this settings to exist because it enables the documentation set that's produced within Wearscape 3D to hold vital and relevant information about the development process and where some of the technical articles can be found such as where is the Git repository. The uh, workflow is uh, all configured within managed workflows uh, so you can come along and and build out what you want to happen using the standard workflow scripts. And you can also add in other 
buttons. So if you wanted to include a mixture of your data vault or your star schema, and you might want to include some of the standard default discovery or, you know, let's go for a data vault design, create a data vault, you can include that on, on the workflow as well. So it means that you can really configure to your own extent and build out all of the workflow buttons to work consistently across all of your developers and to then integrate with Git at the appropriate time. And finally, we're using the templates uh, within the template editor. And you can see we have the standard scripts that are used. A version of these scripts will be available for you to use uh, and download from the Wearscape website. So there you have it guys, Wearscape 3D is seamlessly integrated with Git, enabling your developers to not worry about having to push and pull all the time, but just use those workflow buttons to quickly and effortlessly publish their data model to a Git repository. If your team's looking to use Git as part of its development lifecycle, and you're looking to increase the use of CI CD pipelines to move development and speed your development up, Wearscape 3D can offer you a real choice. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments. We monitor them all the time. Or you can visit our website at www.engagingdata.co.uk.